Hey there, McAllister here with Toasty DIY, and today I'm doing yet another video over Foundry Virtual Tabletop. This one's gonna be to set up characters for the first time. So if you are somebody who's just starting up and you've got players that wanna play, you need to get them set up. So this is gonna be how you give them their own characters. So you should already know now what the basic UI looks like from my last tutorial. And from the first one, you should know how to set up and add a user into your game. So let's say they've joined and you're like, hey, look at this awesome map I made. And they're like, I don't see it. You're like, well, I, I don't know what, I, I placed down a hero. Why, why don't you see him? So the first step is you wanna find out who your character's playing, who your player is playing. And a lot of times you can just ask them for a picture and you can put it into a token maker. So I'm gonna load up the token maker I like to use. You just look up token maker 5e. The best thing about this is that you can go to Google Images while using this. And here's the best thing, that's the rogue, cool. I just need a rogue picture for now and I can hit download. And boom, I've got a token now, I can do that. So let's go ahead and say they're playing this goblin rogue. We're gonna go ahead and create actor, set it to be, it's called Gizmo, and create a new actor. This is under the actor panel right here. So now what we're gonna wanna do is set them up here with prototype token. If they come in here and edit it themselves, they can get it to set up. But if I were to say, drag Gizmo out here and then put in an hour of work, I'm not editing Gizmo over here. So if I have to drag him to a new map, it's gonna be a different Gizmo. This token is map constant. On whatever map it's on, that's what it'll be. So if he's 5 HP here, this one over here will not be 5 HP. This one will be full health. So you need to make sure the one you're working on is not the one on the map, but the one inside of the actor panel. So right-clicking it, you can configure ownership and you should set your player to be the owner of this. This way they can come in here and change it now when they join, they can now control Gizmo. Let's set Gizmo up. We want to prototype his token, go to appearance and import your picture, update token. Now you notice this hasn't changed, but should I drag him out? There he is. So if you want the preview to have him on there, you need to click and add the token one to here as well. Now, personal recommendation, you should create a folder and call it heroes and drag your guy in. And then I have one, for instance, for like undead, elementals, and you can just go ahead and move your monsters however you like, or demons. I'm just gonna go ahead and put all these in elementals just to get rid of them. So now I've got Gizmo, and what I like to do is just give it to my player and let them fill out their sheet, because they may want to generate it on D&D Beyond or some other website, however they want to do it, up to them. But the important thing is the inventory and what they're gonna have on them. And now I have what I like to do this, it's really easy, and it's built into the system. If you download the 5e system, you can go to compendium packs and you can import these compendiums. So let's say he's gonna have Arcane Trickster. We can import all the content of the spells, all the content of racial features, import all content. Now Goblin might be a little bit different, so we have to talk about that. And all items, import all content. So now under the items tab, we have all these spells that are in the SRD. So if they're not in the SRD, you will have to make your own thing, but I can show you the basics of that. So let's load Gizmo up and let's make sure that he always spawns with his sword. So if I go to items here, let's say he wants to have a rapier. Cool, we can add it into his inventory and boom. Now, whenever he wants to roll it, you can literally click on that dice. It'll pop up in the chat log and he can attack. So that's how you can add items in. If they need spells, you have the spell book, same thing. You go to items, let's say he has acid arrow. Awesome, we'll drag that in. And now it'll say second level spell and all this. If you need to customize a spell because it doesn't exist, my recommendation is find the closest spell to it. So if it's fireball, a similar spell would be shatter. Okay, cool, so we have shatter. And now I can go into details and change everything about the spell, including, you know, does it have a saving throw? Cool. What's the formula? Thunder, versatile damage, anything you want to do, you can come through here and, and set them up. So you can change the spellcasting materials, what type of spell it is, any effects if you want to set those up, go for it. But if you have a spell that doesn't exist, find a close spell, duplicate it, and then go through and edit it as you like. But to make this easy for everyone is I just set all of these to be configured ownership and set all players as observers. And that way they can come through and add their own items and whatnot. And as long as you're, you know, trust them not to cheat, then you don't have to baby them and monitor everything. They can, if they pick up a dagger, add a dagger to their own sheet. They can do all this work. Let's say we're ready. Gizmo's now been filled out by the player and they want to set them down. I want to go ahead and, you know, I want them to move around this scene. And this scene has special sight lines set up so they can't just see everything. If you go to it, right clicking the scene, we can see that under lighting, token vision is enabled. And so you invite your player to the scene and they're like, I can't see anything, I can't see anything. It's because Gizmo under here does not have token vision, which is done under prototype token. So here we have Gizmo. I like when their name is hovered. They get hovered by anyone, players can see other players. So I'm gonna turn that on. And then under appearance, we like them to be one grid, cool. And then vision. Well, let's go ahead and make sure that vision's enabled. Well, how how far can they see? Goblins, I'm sure, have dark vision, so we'll do three, six, or, you know, 60 feet. And then I like them personally in my game to only be able to see 180 degrees around, or actually give them 190 so they have a little bit of peripheral. And I hit update. And now 
If I push Gizmo, you'll notice nothing happened. It's because this Gizmo was made before I prototyped that token. So he exists as a constant on this map only. I need to delete this Gizmo or place a new one. So place a new Gizmo and now watch him. He gets to see the world. I can move Gizmo around as a player by just dragging him and he'll remember what he's seen. You'll see that he's seen this area over here, but now I don't see the other Gizmo. If I want to rotate him, I can hold shift and use my mouse wheel and look around. And this way I could possibly have this one sneak up on him as I'm doing this and then he turns around. Ah, another Gizmo. If players want to open doors, fun fact, they can open them from anywhere. They do not have to be able to do anything but see them. So if you don't want a player opening a door from this far away, I recommend you right click them and lock them until they arrive at the door and then unlock it and warn them that if they open the door, combat will start. That way they don't, you know, accidentally cheat. But as of right now, Gizmo would be a functional character if you wanted to add him in a game. You can always right click and go to his settings and change things. If for instance, he casts light on himself because he wants to have it. So let dim and 30 foot bright in all directions. And now he's casting light in all directions and I can see that from out here. Other than that, some fun things to know is under the compendium, you also have classes. You may wanna import that as well. Class features, that as well. And this way they can go through and add in all their stuff they need. So if they need to have under their features, let's say Song of Rest, for bards, you can drag that right in. And now they know they have it and can ping it for the team so they all know and everyone can roll for their own healing. It just makes it a lot easier. If they wanna say they're a paladin, then they can go ahead and drag that in. And it'll be like, oh, you wanna be a level one paladin? Next, hey, you get these two things? And you say, yep, yeah, give it to them. And it's built in. When they wanna level up, they could be a level one. And now they can take the average or they can just hit next. They get a fighting style, so I'm gonna go ahead and complete. It's a fighting style, I can pick any of these. I'm gonna go ahead and pick dueling. So that's the basics of it. It's pretty easy. I recommend you teach your players how to set this stuff up because if you're playing a more dungeon intensive game like these would typically ask for because you have all the tools to make cool dungeons, I do recommend you teach your players how to do this stuff on their own. That way you're not stuck leveling them up every time, giving them new things. You learn a lot by delving into these menus, but the best way I think to start is do not try to just make your own. Go ahead and copy one they have and then edit it to fit what you need. Especially if you're having issues with armor class, I had this issue as kind of a bonus tip. Go in here and you can see it has this thing right here, like attributes, armor, plus AC, plus dex. If it's giving you an issue and it's not working, like you want to be able to be a Warforged and that's not built in, go ahead and do a custom formula, paste this in, and then add a plus one for being Warforged. And now it'll automatically, if I were to give this character, let's say, studded leather they found it in a dungeon and they want studded leather plus one now if i hit equip it automatically adds that together because it used that formula it gave a plus one and then added this and it should add plus dex it automatically does it for you so 12 ac plus dex he doesn't have any dex let's give him a 16 in dex and watch what happens his ac went up to 16 and it tells you the breakdown on why really nice this system makes it very easy when characters want to roll initiative also make sure to just have them roll right here and that's going to be everything for setting up characters i know it's a lot there's a, a lot to learn with this system but i wanted to try to cover everything I could think of as quickly as possible so you could just get running with it. So if you just watched this video, you should have been able to take a character from idea to playable for your players. Don't forget to configure ownership. They will not see it unless you do that. And don't forget to do the prototype token. Do not edit it on the board. Always edit it in the prototype. Anything you do on prototype will not transfer to any existing version of your character. So make sure you're dragging in new ones whenever you need to. Other than that, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And I appreciate you. Peace.